Okay, good morning guys. Welcome to Caternix Corner. My name's Terry and today I wanted to briefly discuss the uh, topic of getting NPIP certified and uh, whether you should or shouldn't. Um, if I sound a little bit nasally this morning, it's because I'm just getting over a cold. Um, but I just got uh, my flock certified yesterday and I wanted to get this video out there. Um, so if you could bear with me. Um, MPIP, uh, National Poultry Improvement Plan. Uh, it's a national organization that, uh, I guess some back in the 30s, put in some uh, um, rules into effect of the testing that they want done on your flock to ensure that uh, you're not spreading uh, polarum typhoid, uh, salmonella-based uh, disease, um, or avian influenza. Um, a lot of states, as a matter of fact, I believe all states require that you are MPIP certified if you are going to be shipping uh, birds and or hatching eggs across state lines, at least in Florida. I know that's the way the, uh, the law reads. Um, uh, what the program is, it's uh, recommended for flock owners who are breeding and or hatching eggs. Um, to be tested, your breeders need to be at least four months of age. and. Uh, the test is for polarum typhoid, um, and it's, uh, they also have a biannual test for avian influenza. Now, that's, this is what they've told me, and this is what Florida rules are. But I believe being a national organization, those rules are going to apply nationally to this thing. So I could be wrong. Um, you can check their website um, for your state's uh, rules and laws and whatnot. Uh, the benefits of being NPIP certified. Um, is one you can ship across state lines. If you ship eggs or birds, um, you want to be certified. Um, that way when you ship, you're also telling the other person, your customer, that your birds are clean. Okay, and so the actual process was pretty simple. Um, I just called up the Department of Agriculture, explained to them that I wanted to get MPIP certified, and uh, they asked me a few questions, like what kind of birds I had, the number of birds, uh, whether or not I shipped across state lines and then took a bunch of my personal information. Uh, they explained that they would be passing my information along to the Department of Agriculture uh, that was local to my area and that they would contact me to set up an appointment to come out and test the birds. So when the inspectors showed up, um, they were really great people. They came in the quail room, they explained the entire process to me, um, told me that uh, he was only going to test my breeders and that they had to be a minimum of four months old in order to be tested. So I showed him where my breeders were and he counted them up and he said, we're just gonna do a percentage of breeders. Um, and I think they tested like 25 of the hens and five or six of the roosters. Um, the test process was pretty straightforward. Um, basically they take this test solution and they, they put dots, uh, drops on a white plastic board, looked like a cutting board of some type and then drew blood from each of the birds and mixed it in with the test solution. And the reaction to test positive was the uh, test solution would turn almost like a sandy, gritty feel to it. And that means they tested positive for polarum typhoid. Um, they did not test for uh, AI, which is avian influenza, uh, because I do not ship birds across state line. Uh, he explained to me, if I, in the future, I wanted to ship birds, that they would come out, they would do the AI test, and that's a biannual test. They do that twice a year. So um, how they test the birds, basically they, they'll take an individual bird, turn it upside down, um, and pull some feathers near the armpit of the bird, I guess it would be, to expose a vein to where they could draw blood from. And they had this little tool where they would poke the vein, a drop of blood would come out, they would turn the tool around, which had a loop on it, and they would scoop the blood up and then mix it in the test solution uh, to see what the results were. So luckily, we tested clean for everything. Um, it took about an hour, I think, to do the entire process, mainly because I was filming it and I was asking them a bunch of questions and whatnot. So, okay, so I hope this uh, gives you a better idea on the process of getting NPIP certified. Uh, if you want some more information, um, you can always check out their website at poultryimprovement.org, and I'll put a link in the description down below. Um, do I think it's a good idea to get uh, MPIP certified? I do. 
And for reasons is, one, it's peace of mind for me. And even though I don't ship across state lines all that often, um, the customers that I do sell to within the state um, know that they're getting clean birds. They're not going to introduce any diseases into their flock. So, you know, for me, it's a win-win. So I want to thank you guys for uh, joining me today. Um, I hope this helped. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Um, we've got new videos coming out all the time. And uh, by subscribing, you help me out, and it'll uh, give you notifications on any new and upcoming videos. So thanks for putting up with my uh, nasally head today, and I appreciate it, guys. Uh, have a wonderful week, and we'll see you on the next one.